So what's so special about the number 10? Well, in this video, we're going to learn how the number 10 can be used to describe objects of different sizes, or scales, and how we can categorize those different scales by name. Basically, we want to be able to tell what scale an object is just by looking at it. Now, why is this a big deal? Well, think of something really tiny, like a sugar molecule. How big is it? Or what about a blood cell? Or a bowling ball? Or maybe the planet Earth? Well, these objects exist at such different scales of size that we need a system for describing them. Enter the power of 10. What's so special about this number? Well, if we take a number and divide it by the number 10, what we observe is that the decimal point moves left. So, for instance, 5 divided by 10 turns into 0.5, or 459 divided by 10 turns into 45.9, or 0.00146 divided by 10 turns into 0.000146. Multiplication does exactly the opposite. So if I take my number 5 and I multiply it by 10, the decimal moves to the right. So 5 turns into 50. 459 times 10 turns into 4590. And then 0.00146 times 10 turns into 0 0.0146. So dividing by 10 moves the decimal left, and multiplying moves the decimal to the right. So let's go back to our bowling ball. How can we describe its size? Well, we can describe the size of any object by comparing it to a meter. A meter is a metric unit of length, which is a little longer than three feet. An average adult human is about two meters tall. So how can we use meters to describe an object about the size of a bowling ball? Would we say that it's one quarter of a meter across? Well, that's sort of a mouthful. Well, let's use the power of 10 on our meter. If we take our meter and slice it into 100 pieces, well, that's just 10 times 10. Now, each slice is one hundredth of a meter, or 0 0.01 meters. We call that a centimeter. Now, our bowling ball is about 25 centimeters across. So let's do a little math here. If we take 25 times 0 0.01 meters, that gives us 0 0.25 meters across. So that's how we can describe our bowling ball. Now, the bowling ball is an example of an object that we would call macroscopic. Macro means big, and scopic means vision or to see. So a rule of thumb is that an object is macroscopic if it's big enough to be seen with the naked eye. But what about a really tiny object such as our cell? Well, this object is so small that even our centimeter is too big to describe it. By using the power of 10, we can take our centimeter and slice it into even smaller slices. What if we sliced it into so many pieces that each one was only one millionth of a meter across? We would call this a micrometer. This brings us to a new word, and that's microscopic. Micro means very small, and scopic means vision or to see. So how many micrometers across is our cell? Well, if we line them up, we find that our cell is about 30 micrometers across. So let's use the power of 10 again. If we take 30 and multiply it by one millionth of a meter or a micrometer, we get 0 0.000030 meters. Now the term microscopic might actually ring a bell, and that's because any object that's microscopic is too small to see unless you have a tool called a microscope. Now what about something really tiny like atoms? Can a microscope see those? Well, they're actually too small even for a microscope. So that naturally brings us back to our extremely tiny object, the sugar molecule. So what is a molecule? Well, it's really just a group of atoms that are bonded together, which themselves are extremely tiny. So how are we supposed to describe something as small as a sugar molecule? We might be able to use the power of 10 again. Remember our micrometer? Well, even it's too big to describe something as small as a sugar molecule. Well, let's use the power of 10 again to slice that into even smaller pieces. 
To describe the size of our sugar molecule, we would need to slice our meter into one billion pieces, so that each one was one billionth of a meter across. We call these nanometers. And anything that's this small, we call nanoscopic. So nano means extremely tiny, and scopic again means vision or to see. So nanoscopic is really so small that even a microscope can't help you see it. So let's do the math again. Our sugar molecule is about one nanometer across. So if we take one times one billionth of a meter, well, of course we get one billionth of a meter. So we would say that our sugar molecule was 0 0.000000001 meters across. What about something that's really big? Something that's the scale of the size of the Earth? Well, our humble meter fails us here. It's just too small to describe something so big. But what if we lined up a thousand of them in a row? We might be able to work with that. If we lined up a thousand meters end to end, this is called a kilometer. And the planet Earth is about 13,000 kilometers across. So if we use the power of 10 and multiply 13,000 by a thousand meters, we get 13 million meters. Three, two, one. And there's a term we use to describe objects this big. It's called large. Large just means it's a lot bigger than macroscopic. So to review, if an object is about the right size to hold in your hand, we would call that macroscopic. If it's so small you need a microscope to see it, we say microscopic. And if it's even smaller than that, we call it nanoscopic. And if you need kilometers to describe it, we call that large. So let's get a little practice with identifying scales. So for each of the following objects, I want you to identify the scale. Remember, we have nanoscopic, microscopic, macroscopic, and large to work with here. So I'm drawing eight objects, and for each one, I want you to see if you can't identify what scale it belongs to. I'll give you about 10 seconds to see if you can figure out each one, but you can pause the video at this point if you want. So let's see how you did. Well, the Milky Way and the Pacific Ocean are both large because you would have to use kilometers to describe their size. Now, something like the dye or the grain of sand, you can see with the naked eye, which means they're macroscopic. The bacterium is micro, and so is the flu virus, because either one of these, you can use a microscope to see it. The carbon atom and the DNA strand are both way too small to see with a microscope. So we would say that those were nanoscopic. So now you should be able to use our different scales to describe things of different sizes, thanks to the power of 10. So until next time...